White City Courts, 1967. Emerson and Roach play off in the New South Wales State Championships. A reasonable crowd, but the tendencies aren't up to what they used to be. Is the Australian interest in tennis falling off? If the match is light on the excitement side, sun and hard seats can make it a bit of an endurance test. Mind you, the devotees of the game always form a loyal cheer squad, but people aren't packing the stands. Will open tennis change the scene? Double fault. Australia has been turning out some of the world's best players for nearly half a century. Back in the 1950s, the game reached an all-time high with Frank Sedgman and the tennis twins, Hode and Rosewell. From then on, competition players have favoured a fast serve and volley brand of tennis. It's well suited to the traditional Australian grass court and it wins matches. But the spectators want a superb shot or two and some tricky tactics to stir their enthusiasm. 40, 15. Keep your eye on the ball. Don't if Australian spectators do fancy more showmanship in their tennis, Australian parents are sending more and more of their children to learn the basics of the game. Many a child drops out of the classes once the parents' enthusiasm dies down, but there are also those whose ambition it is to play on competition courts. From these will come another generation of champions. There's enough interest to justify special camps being organised, where boys and girls can improve their game. Let's not push your foot now. I want you to hit the ball. Fresh air, exercise, sunshine, friends. But a climate that allows tennis to be played all year round may equally lure the tennis player to other sports. We're going out yachting tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'll just watch TV. I like golf, but uh, cricket's okay to watch. The basketball team expects you to practice it. A band of stalwarts keeps up the traditions of the game, but they're traditions which seem more suited to the 30s than to the hectic relaxation demanded by today's fast-moving scenes. It was a major Walter Clapton Wingfield who took the credit for adapting today's tennis from the older form, Royal Tennis. He intended it as an entertainment to be played on those manicured lawns that sprawled around the gracious homes of 19th century England. The 20th century is less generous with time and property. People just don't seem to have the time to play on their backyard courts nowadays. Besides, with land values like they are today, who can really afford to keep a private court? In the outback, interest in tennis has remained strong. Church, then a social game. G'day, Jeff. G'day, how are you going? Distances are great, so obviously social occasions are more limited than in the cities. And this social element is important. The suburban tennis clubs are beginning to provide amenities other than the bare courts and sheds. But not all tennis matches are played out in an atmosphere of tense concentration. For those with the necessary energy and skill, there are high-powered club competitions and amateur championships. But for a lot of us, tennis is one sport where you don't have to be an expert, or particularly fit, to enjoy it. 
tennis was designed as a social game. If you don't make Centre Court, White City, two consolations. The pleasure of the social game and the excitement of watching the experts.